Okay. Then, uh, if you want, we can follow the usual order and start with uh, pull requests and then issues, and then any other thing that we need to discuss. Or do you want to add anything else to the agenda? Yeah, I, I think there was an item that we wanted to discuss from yesterday's general call related related to how we plan to release metrics. Matt, am I recalling that correctly? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So there's a, a spreadsheet in terms of related to the release of metrics. And then I have I'll well, I'll share it to you when we get share it when we get there. And then um then the other thing that kind of came up yesterday or that I brought up yesterday was just kind of making sure that the working groups and the software, so Grimoire Lab and Augur, are trying to work in concert with one another to not only release the metrics, but actually deploy them in software and how that can be identified pretty clearly, whether it's in Grimoire Lab or Augur. It's just not a, it's not yeah. a question really just for this group, but kind of for everybody. Okay. Um, and I think I think of all the working groups, we've been pretty closely aligned with with that from the start. I know um, initially Augur and it's in one of its prototypes and currently creates a link between the, a metric and the chaos definition. And when I was t I think when I was talking to Daniel at um, the leadership summit, he indicated that similar um, functions and links are either in Grimoire Lab or on the roadmap for Grimoire Lab. Okay. Uh, Jesus, you can correct me. That was a wrong conversation, or if I'm remembering something that never happened. <laughs> okay, then we add the, the, the issue to the image. Anything else? Um, no. Okay. No one else? Then let's go to issues to start with. Sorry, you, um, yeah, right, easy. Okay, so we have a list of them. I was closing some old issues yesterday. And uh, if we go with the issues that are open in my list, uh, the first one is uh, number 140, 140. Metrics files are missing. And uh, this is just an open discussion on what to, on what to do with the uh, files that are missing because we don't have the detailed definition for the metric yet. And uh, um, if you look at uh, all the thread, my, my final suggestion was to mention in the readme that this is intended because it doesn't make a lot of sense to have completely empty files, I mean only the templates, until we start working with them. Uh, so if you agree, uh, there is right now somebody producing a pull request uh, for that. And that would be mainly a clarification in the readme, just saying that uh, until we start working seriously with a metric, we are not going to produce an empty file for it. So if you agree, I think that we can go to the next one. What do you think? Any comment? So the comment is the comment here to not have empty files? Is that right? Yeah, exactly. That not having empty files is intended. I suppose not having empty files. Do you mean um, like a metric with just the headings, but not anything filled in yet? Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, I, so the issue, I would close that issue because that is part of how we make it easy for newcomers if they want to fill in a metric to actually go do that because we give them the section. So I think having the empty ones are good. Is that is that our sense of why we would close it? To just say that this is part of how we welcome newcomers or is there some other thought process? Yeah, happening? no, uh, basically the idea is to produce uh, some text for the readme explaining that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and, and there is somebody right now uh, uh, producing a pull request for that. Oh, awesome. I, I think that's a, that's a good idea. And do we close the issue when the pull request comes to pass or do we do just close it now? Okay. Um, that's a question. Yeah, do you want to close this issue? 
or just or do the pull request first? Well, let, let's let's keep let's keep the issue open so that because somebody said that they are working on it, but I still didn't saw the pull request. So just in case for any reason this person cannot do that, uh, we can have somebody else doing it. That's why I love it. That's a good first issue. So Sean, close the issue when the pull request gets merged. I think you can just close yeah. the issue on that comment. You know what I mean? That makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Okay, great. Any other comment about this uh, issue? Okay, then the, the next one is this discussion about uh, metrics for measuring efficiency. We can have a look at the thread. Up to now, we didn't have a lot of, of um, feedback. Uh, I just encourage you to try to Tell anything you may want, because I would like to start working on this uh, during the next two weeks before the next meeting. So trying to have a proposal for the next meeting. So if you want to enter and join the discussion and propose anything, please do so as soon as possible. And, uh, and uh, in any case, I also propose this to be the usual way of dealing with metrics in the future, which could be like opening an issue, letting anyone comment on that kind of metrics, and then produce the pull records afterwards, if you agree. So the idea is to open the issue, kind of settle on the definition of the metric, and then open yeah. the pull request to... Yeah, basically to have any kind of comment on whether people agree with the metric, so they want different ones, or they have any issue that they want to discuss, so that the process is a bit more um, transparent and inclusive for that. Okay. Because, uh, you know, working with the detailed definitions and so on, is in some cases, it's a bit difficult. Yep. But just giving your idea, your opinion is, is much more easy. Yep, okay. So, okay. So I will leave it open and uh, I encourage yeah. anyone to produce um, comments on wherever if they want. And my idea is to try to produce a pull request during the, the next two weeks, having into account this feedback. Okay. Sean, did you get that? Sean is no longer on the call. So he didn't get it. <laughs> so the, but I get the point. Pull request 138 as a represented as a representation of kind of how all metrics could live, um, and you'll leave this open, Jesus. For a Sorry, can, you, can you repeat? Yep. So I, Sean has dropped off. So I'm just trying to repeat what you were saying, just so I have it in my oh. head. Okay. But, um, this is on the efficiency. This is on one particular metric. So there's kind of two things you're proposing here. One is that any metric that should be discussed use it in a pull request generically. Sorry, yeah, in, I'm in back, fact, my phone broke. Fact, okay, in fact, this is, it is one of the goals in the, yep. code, uh, in the code development of the tutorial. Yep, and then the second is to, to just kind of leave this issue open to see if anybody has comments on how code efficiency or how efficiency is understood here. Yeah. And then after a couple of weeks, you'll issue a pull request. Yeah. based on the discussion or the the general lack of discussion, which might kind of imply agreement. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, discussion I by, yeah, okay. not discussing. So Sean, this is just, this is for you, this is a question about how to measure efficiency. This is pull request. Oh, right. So this is issue 138. So if you want to have that discussion, head over to that issue. Okay, we said uh, 438. One one three eight. It'll be in the minutes that we one. sent. Out. Okay. Uh, I think I think that the, the current list of metrics is based on the previous GMD work, so mm -hmm. that the, the, the idea is to to which extent people are happy with it, and in that case, it is only a matter of writing the detailed information for each of the metrics, or they want to, you know, include some others or change the focus for how we are measuring um, efficiency or whatever. Cool. Okay. So the, if, if there are no more comments about this one, can we move to the next yeah. one with this? 
136. This is a, a thread about um, whether we should be including some testing for the reference implementations. If you look at it, basically the, the current status is to deal with that later on, because this doesn't seem to be a priority right now. If you go to the end of the thread, so uh, the, 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 the idea is to uh, try to run the metrics on the notebook, maybe later. And uh, my proposal is to keep this, I don't know if open or closed, but keep it in mind. And uh, when after Google Summer of Code, we have hopefully a lot of uh, reference implementations, we can decide how to make the testing for them. Because right now I find it a bit premature because we still don't have many um, reference implementations. So talking about testing is difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it kind of feels like the, this is for reference repositories. Like is this question about like trying to identify um, repositories that can always be tested against? Is that? That could be one approach. So the idea is, since the reference implementations are software, yeah. how to write testing for that software? And one of the of yes. the approaches could be to identify some repositories and run the metrics on them, so that we know once and again what the results could be, and we can compare that with the result by the reference implementation to, to see okay. whether we had some regression or something else. But there are some other approaches that could also be taken, like uh, detecting I don't know exceptional conditions, for instance. Okay, so I think if the I think if the reference implementation provides a, basically takes an input structure that and I think this discussion we had on another call, as long yeah. as it takes an input structure that doesn't have a dependency to a specific way of getting the data that's tested that it's tested against. So like for right now, I think the easiest thing is to have Percival put together reference data that that is in the structure that the the um, in the what a prototype implementation or the reference implementation um, of the metric uses, and I think we would in the long run, if as other formats emerge for structuring the data, as long as the the reference implementation of the metric simply takes an input string, um, we could produce. First of all, we'd have the reference data that we would use just for our standard Travis CI test cases, but then we would also just be sure to somewhere say that, you know, we're not explicitly coupling any data collection or structure of the data to metrics. Uh, you know, for example, we may choose for issue metrics to um, pull from five or six different common issue trackers and just get that data structured in the same way. So the key would be to have like reference structure implementations that that are derived from some reference set of repositories or open source projects that are independent of how the data is collected. So yeah, I'm just I, suggesting I, coupling that part from it, from a, from a, that would open it up for more people to help create uh, test cases as well, because they may not have uh, our Travis CI reference data ready at hand, but they have their own data. And if they can take inputs from anywhere, then that will make it easier for them. Uh, I, I agree with that. My, my, my only issue is that maybe it's a bit a, a bit early to do that because we still don't have a lot of experience with uh, reference implementations themselves. But I agree, so that could yeah. be a very good approach. Yeah. And I think for now that we just say it's a policy that you know we will have reference data. This will be our reference data. We're probably going to get it from Percival here at the start, and we just have kind of a policy that the you know of decoupling that uh, it's good software engineering principle just to not couple the origins of the data to how the test reference, the reference test data is generated. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and do you think that it is better to leave the, the issue open for now or we close with this comment? For now? I think my take is, oh, go ahead, Sean. I think I just close it with the comment that reflects what I said and I can go in and make that comment myself or somebody else can make that comment because I, I don't think any of us would disagree conceptually with it. Okay, so way, I agree. So Sean, why don't you make a comment and then close it? The way I understand this, and you can all tell me if I'm wrong, is that 
the idea is well received. However, the first thing that needs to happen is the metrics need to be built out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be yeah. before this. Although sometimes I would say that we, we sometimes will build the reference implementation and then use the nuances of whatever reality we face in data or software to shape the, the metric definition. Um, so sometimes it works in both ways. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the, go on with the rest of your thought, because I think I agree with that. Okay. I, I mean, in, in that regard, I would actually recommend just leaving the issue open. I would say, I like the idea kind of thing, but let's table this until we build out some of the focus areas with the respective metrics first. Okay, but in that case, let's include a comment just saying that yeah. we are keeping it open. Yep. that we are waiting until we have more mature reference implementation or something. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that's good. Now, now I'll go, what's the issue number? It one is three, uh, one three six. Yeah. One three six. Yes. Okay. Oh, so. Uh, hello. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Uh, all the pipeline thing could be done uh, side by side, like when uh, some eight to nine matrix are implemented during the uh, the so period, then we can start uh, integrating them to the pipeline. And as more matrix are integrated, then uh, it would be added to the pipeline side by side, uh, rather than uh, just uh, doing it all at the end after the implementation. No, but I'm not saying doing that after the implementation, but after we have some more experience with implementations, because implementations are still very new, and uh, we only have one or two of them right now, which are mature in the repository, and uh, we even need to define an schema, because right now the implementations are notebooks, and for being test table, we need to convert it into libraries or something that, at least into modules, so that we can test the module or something like that. Yeah, that, yeah the, the point of the issue is really important that we just, you know, we start doing Travis CI kinds of things to, you know, just make sure as we change things over time that we're not breaking logically yeah. what we've defined as the metric and the software reference implementation. So it's really sound logic. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we can follow the discussion with different approaches proposed and try to find out an, an schema and, uh, and try to start implementing it if you want, but I would wait until we have at least three or four different reference implementations so that we really understand the problem. That sounds like a good idea. Okay. Any other comment or the rest of the people do agree with this? Yep, this is good. Okay, then thank you very much. Uh, then, uh, Sam, feel free to write this in the, on the issue. I will do um, two, and we follow the discussion and keep the issue open for now. Okay, the, the I think next we agree one, to that, yeah. Okay. The next one is 134, 134, okay. definition, uh, definition of abandoned issues. Uh, this is a discussion on the, how to define inactive issues and abandoned issues, uh, in fact. And if you look at my latest comment, I'm basically proposing a definition for inactive issues which is uh, the one uh, that was proposed earlier. And, uh, and I'm not happy with the idea of abandoned issues because I don't think that people usually label issues as such in issue tracking system, which means it's very difficult to detect them. With inactive issues, I think they are, they are something that we can detect and that which are very useful to detect because in fact, you can look at which ones didn't have a comment, didn't have a change in state, so that you can really now, this has been sitting here for one year and nobody cares. So in short, I would be using the definition for inactive issues, and I would drop abandoned issues as a message. So 
what do you think? Hi. Any comments? Uh, it's just I'm on a phone. I'm, it's hard to hear. Uh, it's hard to really okay. follow exactly uh, what we mean. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I think it's uh, you're right on the fact that it's difficult to detect abandoned issues. So the definition could be just inactive issues. And then you have to sort them out by period of time. And this is something that is pretty much individual per project that, you know, in a quarter, semester, half a year, one year, they can review inactive issues. And based on the classification, whether there is this is a impending issue or it's uh, important or it's a story, whatever it is, then um, it, it's a pretty good tool to uh, uh, for for the team to determine how well they're managing a, some of these issues. Okay. Any other comments? I think uh, I think inactive issues are issues that are that are open, and I think applying the abandoned issue tag to it would happen to a closed issue. Like it, it's inactive while it's open, but if you close it due to inactivity, then you're basically labeling as abandoned. That's what I'm saying. But what I, what I'm saying is that it's very unusual that the project just labels something that they are closing. Usually they just close. And uh, which means that it's very difficult to find out how to use this metric in, in, the, in the real world. That's the only thing. So I agree that if we could have the information of this issue was abandoned, that's quite interesting. But my impression is that's something that we just cannot do. Uh, but how do you propose to find uh, the, these issues? You mean abandoned issues? Yeah, abandoned issues. I propose to drop that metric, so don't don't so worry about it. I, okay. So what I would suggest instead is that we implement it as an open issue, as a parameter on what is already the sort of implementation of an open issue in some cases, and we say that a project or somebody doing analysis can say, you know, anything older than 90 days with no comments, or this is just for example, older than such 90 days with no comments or activity, but that hasn't been closed is something I would classify as an abandoned issue in my project. And then that metric is helpful that I can throw a parameter in to decide what I think abandoned means. That helps me filter out and identify really quickly old issues to see if it's not abandoned. In fact, that, that I have it open for a reason. And, and so I think, I don't think we need to abandon the metric. I think we need to say the metric can't be defined in the absence of the parameter for the definition of a time period for what abandoned means. Sure. Uh, the, uh, with the concept, I agree. Uh, the only thing is that's inactive issues as we are defining it now. Because the inactive but, issues but is an active, does an active, does, does an active have a parameter? We can, we can have it. So, I mean, the, the discussion is about the name and how to define it. Okay. And, and, and I agree so, with you, I agree with you with the parameter because I think what different projects are going to consider inactive issues as very different things. So that having that parameter so, like how, how long, that makes a lot of sense. So, so from a, so I'm thinking now not as a software person, but as a consumer of the metrics, I mean, it would be helpful for me to have, so inactive means something to me like, okay, there's been no activity, um, but that might be okay. And I, I would look at those in a different way than I would look at and define, not necessarily, the implementation might be exactly the same, but the way that I would define, this is an abandoned metric. Um, because I think there is, a, in, in practice, a need sometimes to distinguish between the list of things that are inactive but possibly for a reason and abandon, like we just aren't dealing with this at all. And we left it out there and we, we don't know why. I, I guess it would depend on the practice, but I think defining the metric might, might be helpful, but I might be overthinking it as well. And I'm fine if we just say that's what we mean by an active and maybe just throw a, for example, 
some projects may refer to this as an abandoned issue after a certain period of time into the inactive metric, um, giving a little bit more subtlety and clarity to the definition of that metric of, of, of um, inactive. So, I, so like, in other words, just don't abandon the language of abandonment because I think it is used in practice. But, but then, oh, it does, doesn't, it doesn't need to be its own metric though. Uh, if I understand, what you mean is to, to use the name abandoned issues, even when the, the concept is of inactive issues, is that it? Or no, I'm, it? I'm, thinking like, I'm thinking like I see your point about let's not create a metric for every possible temporal state of a, of a thing that we're measuring. Um, mm -hmm. I'm suggesting that so maybe we close the abandoned issue and not have abandoned issues, but in the inactive issue metric, we add a sentence that says, you know, for example, some projects have different parameters for things that are simply inactive and things that are abandoned. So that two things, one, the notion of abandonment is addressed by chaos. And two, if somebody searches our metric definition looking for abandonment, they'll find that word in the inactive metric. And, and then that will, so basically it'll show up in a search of, of our metrics and they'll find what they need. Whereas if we don't have any, if we don't have that word anywhere, then somebody who thinks about it that way is not never going to find that metric or not find it easily. But then the idea is to keep both with the same. No, I'm sorry. Or, or I, I didn't no. The, sorry, sorry. Here's the idea. Here's the idea. Close the abandoned metric or get rid of it. And then in the definition of inactive metric. Okay. I see add that. one sentence. Add one okay. sentence that says in some projects, project, um, issues that are are um, inactive may exist between 30 and 80 days, and issue, they might classify issues that are abandoned as between 90 and days and infinity. And and just sort of adding that sentence, I think, clarifies the what inactive metric is, and it also makes the word abandoned show up if they do a search, which will make it'll help people find the inactive metric for the thing that they're looking for. So it's really just a information retrieval point. Okay, that's a very good idea. So I, I support it. Would you mind writing the summary of that so that we can have it into account? And, uh, and I can try to produce yeah. pull requests for the text. Do you want me to put the summary in a, into issue one, 134? Yeah. One hundred. Yeah, yeah. uh, Georg did already did. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Oh, yeah, see, I don't have to do great. I don't have to do something. That's awesome. <laughs> Can I ask a quick okay. question on this? It's not about. Don't worry. I'm not asking about abandoned versus, versus inactivity. Um, it, this is. Is this issue associated with? Oh, it's within the issue resolution focus area, right? Yeah. Okay. And so is it with the particular metric called closed issue resolution duration? Which mm -hmm. metric is this particular or open issue age? Is, issue, op, open issue duration, I believe, is what it's measuring technically, right, Jesus? So uh, this comes from a metric that we have in Algo. And uh, it's related to issue resolution, which is something that we are still, I mean, issue resolution efficiency, which is a part of efficiency, which we still are discussing. So that's why we still don't have in the focus area and a specific definition for this, which okay. is very related to the other issue where we are discussing on efficiency and what's, what's that. So it's, it's in fair. the same. So, so right easy. now, so you're talking, this is related to issue resolution efficiency as, as the official exactly. name of the metric. I'm just trying to get things. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that because in the metrics list, if I go over, you know, to the chaos metrics list, that huge activity metrics list, that is where the term abandon is used. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, that was, it was just a point of clarification. Thank you, no, very no, much. thank you. Thank you very much. And, and I, I want to add that the discussion is quite important now because since we are going to start with resolution goal, it's in, sorry, with the efficiency goal, this is something that we need to clear out in the, okay. in the first minute. 
So can somebody capture that in the minutes if it hasn't been captured already, that this is related to, um, I'm just looking it up, specifically related to the focus area of issue resolution and the metric of issue resolution efficiency. Yeah. And it's also related to the efficiency goal in code development uh, focus area. Code development. Okay, that is, okay. So that, which is the goal that we have under discussion now, because it is the next one that I wanted to work with. Okay, fine. Okay. Can, you repeat that? Can you repeat that last bit, Jesus? Yeah, I, I was saying that this metric is also relevant for the uh, efficiency goal in uh, the code development focus area. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Okay, then if we are done with this one, we can go to the next, which is uh, number 110, which is reviews instead of proposals. So if you remember, this is something that we agreed in the last meeting after some discussion. And the idea was to use the name reviews instead of proposals. And uh, I was to produce a new pull request, including uh, the new term, but also including this dictionary of changes in names for the metrics. And I did that in, pull, in a pull request, which is pull request number, uh, sorry, number 119, 119. Uh, I produced it a couple of days ago or maybe yesterday. So, and I tried to capture everything that we discussed in our latest meeting. Okay. Uh, so if any of you want to have a look at it and uh, maybe a profit document in it, that would be good so that we can uh, move on with the new name. And, and, and once the pull request is there, we can close the issue. Okay, well, I just put a comment in the issue to link it to the pull request. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So then, please, some of you have to look at it so that we can move forward in the pull request and then, base it on that, decide on the, on the basically close the issue once we're done. So and I'll ask Sean, can you take a look at pull request 119? Sean's still on. Yep. Um, okay. Yep, I'm still here. Okay. Um, and uh, sorry, Sam, this is also related to uh, issue 101, which is maintain a dictionary of metrics and historical names, which uh, last oh, yeah. meeting we decided, we decided to start with the change and that they included in the same pool request. So in the, in the same pool request, okay. you can find a new file, which is the starting. The dictionary. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is good. I'll do a quick review, and I think I agree with closing this because you added that. I think that that's all we need. Okay, great. Okay, any other thing about these two issues, 110, 101? There wasn't much talk on 101, but it sounds like Sean's doing something on it. No. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, yep. I believe if it's related to 119 pull request, I'm about to close that. Okay. I'm just making a comment on my review. I added a comment on the pull request to automatically close 110 and 101. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I, I can take care of that later. Thank you. Okay, then we can move to uh, 99, which is uh, uh, address refining CAM and simple requests, number uh, 90. So um, we decided at some point to merge 90 and to work on it, but uh, I think that we should leave this issue open so that uh, we remind that we need to do this. 
because uh, the comment by Sim was very sensible, and the idea was to define the definition, deciding how to count open to records and how to deal with the open issue. And uh, so I, I plan to take care of that with the new pull records at some point, but they couldn't. And of course, any of you is welcome to do uh, it if you want. All right. Which pull request is it, Jesus? This is the issue 99. 9999, okay. which you have started and I, and I fully support, but I still couldn't find the time to uh, produce the book record. Okay, all right, yes, yeah, so we just leave this open for now, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, saying. great. Then we have two issues, 82 and 81, related to Google Summary of Code. I think that they are just progressing. Remember that we are using these pieces. I have, a, I have another meeting now, so I have to go, but I will talk to you all later. Okay. Bye. Bye, Sean. Thanks, Sean. I was saying that uh, for issues uh, 82 and 81, uh, we are using those for, for tracking questions and answers for Google Summer of Code, so I think we need to keep them open. Yep. Uh, then we have issue 61 and issue 48, which are related to the use cases. One of those is, if, if, you, if you go to pull requests, one of those is the pull request uh, 91, which uh, I propose to close for now, because we were waiting for Cal's feedback for, uh, for a while, for a couple of months, and for some reason he couldn't provide the feedback. But my impression is that we are in, uh, in sync with uh, his original proposal. So I would move on, uh, accept the pull request, and work on the use case, on defining the use case, either with him or without him if he, can, if he cannot find the time. So what do you think? I agree to merge it and then revise it as it lives in the repository. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. okay. Then, uh, if you want any of you, just comment on that or directly merge whatever you prefer. Georg, can you do that? Sure, I can merge it. Okay. And 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 I would still leave the two issues open because in one of them, we still need to produce the, the pull record, but there I think that we need some uh, input by Carl. And uh, for the other one, we still need to refine the use case because uh, we need to uh, refine the metrics and, if, um, and, and say a bit more, because up to now we had the, the refining up to the level of questions only, not metrics. Do you wanna keep the issue open even as the pull request is merged? Yeah, because the pull request is the first version of the use case, but the, okay. the, the pull request is including only the questions which are relevant for the use case, but we should produce the list of metrics that are relevant to answer those questions. I see, and then you just wanna have that discussion in the existing issue. Yeah, right. Okay. And uh, if there are no more comments with issues, we're done with issues. Yeah, and, and we made to a number of pull requests too. Yeah, uh, we have a new pull request, which I didn't know about. This is by you, Georg. Do you want to explain it? The idea behind this pull request is to um, display focus areas in a table so that when someone comes to the readme, that they can immediately see what a focus area is about, and also to create a readme in the focus area repository. So when someone looks through the repository structure, they get an easily displayed um, overview of the focus areas. Okay, thank you, Gerd. I think it's a good idea. If you don't mind, let me check it carefully and, I, and, and we can discuss in the pull request itself. Is that right? Yeah, certainly. I just took the scope and goal from the focus area pages. Okay, thank you. And I, I'm going to try to do that um, as soon as possible. Okay, then we are done with issues and pull requests. 
So we can move to the next uh, item in the agenda, which is this discussion about how to produce the uh, release of the metrics. Uh, Matt, maybe you want to introduce uh, the issue? Uh, yeah, so let's see, I gotta get in here. So I'm gonna put it in the chat. Hold on just a second. So this document that I just shared, this is the, hey Seuss, I don't think you were on the call last week, so I just want to kind of loop you in on this. Were you at the evolution call last week? I forget. No, I don't think so. I mean, I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was seven days ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I was not. I think I was not. All right, well, the, the premise of this is actually pretty simple. So, um, so you can see kind of across the, the bottom, there are tabs for every working group, right? So the DNI, evolution, risk, value, and common. Mm -hmm. And then if you just take a look at the DNI, they have their focus areas and the metrics that are currently um, being attended to each of the focus areas. And then the DNI work group just went through an exercise to say that, um, you know, red, we're, we'll work on it, but it's just not going to be part of the release. We just don't have it worked out very well. All the way to green, which means, yeah, this is great. We think we have this pretty well spelled out. Um, and we'd like to include this as part of the release. And so what this does is it, it it does a couple things, right? So it, it asks the working groups to kind of reflect on the metrics that they have in the state that they're in and identify candidate metrics for the release, which is great. And then the second thing it does is it creates a central place for myself and Kevin so that when we're putting these out onto the website, I don't have, we don't have to kind of go working group by working group. You know what I mean? We don't have to, we have a central place that just the working groups have identified metrics for release. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So let me explain how we are doing that now. Sure. And, uh, but, but I'm happy to adapt, but just for you to know, if you go now to the focus area code development, which is the only one where we really have things ready in for the release. Yeah, in the, in the working group evolution repository, Okay. Focus area directory, code development, MD file. Yep. And if you go towards the end, there is a table which is summary of metrics. Yep. So those are the metrics that we consider as fully done. Okay. So that means ready for release. Great. Uh, we basically do that after the corresponding pull request is accepted for this file. And at that Great. moment, uh, okay, this is the metric that we want to release. With respect to the metrics in which we are working now, we are doing that by blocks. So that's why in the case of uh, um, the, the goal uh, activity, we are basically done. In the goal efficiency, we are starting the discussion now. Mm -hmm. And the idea is if we start with goal efficiency, the idea would be to try to deal with all the questions in goal efficiency Great. during the period. Uh, th that is a bit different from what you presented now because it seems that it's a bit like, uh, I mean, in the case of a spreadsheet, it's like uh, sorry, picking this metric from here and from there instead of uh, working with a full goal and, and, and the list of questions, which is a bit different as a methodology. I mean. and, uh, and then uh, once we are working with one of these uh, um, goals, the idea is to start producing, first of all, I agree on the question. Mm -hmm. and then go question after question. Sure. So that means that the mapping with what you have in the spreadsheet could be green. Green is what would you have in the focus uh, area file in the table of release methods. Yellow would be the, focus, uh, the, the, the goal with which we are working now. Sure. And blue means, I mean, the rest of the goal. 
up to the end. Yep. And red means the rest. If you want that we somehow translate that into a spreadsheet like this one, of course we can do. Yep, and I hear you. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're right. I think the, the way I'm hearing you talk is, is moving from focus area to metric. You lose a little bit of that goal question component. It just, it's just yeah, not well, fairly captured there. Yeah, th they are just different methodologies. So yeah. my, my personal view is if you are trying to address a question, you yep. need to find out which metrics uh, you need for that. And only when you are done with the metrics, you can really say this question is addressed. But of course. So they move to the next one and so on. Yep, but, of course. But that's just a, a, a way of doing that. So I understand that uh, the diversity and inclusion may prefer to just cherry pick from here and there because the, the, the way of working is different and, and that's fine with me. Yep. Um, and so I, I think even DNI still kind of follows the focus area goal question metric approach. So they definitely do. And I think in their case, Georg, you can tell me if it's otherwise, but the metrics that are labeled as green have a, a, they're definitely part of a goal. They're definitely attempting to answer a particular question. And then the way that the metric would be presented has been thought, thought through. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's fine. Okay, so great. So in, in short, if you want, or, or if you think that it's useful that we produce a spreadsheet like this one, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with doing that. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is, uh, from my point of view, it would only make sense for the goals that we already work with. Because for the others, we don't really know even the metrics. A hundred percent agree. And then those metrics are just simply not part of the release. Yeah, but not, not only part of the release, they are not even read because means we don't know nothing about them, maybe we are going to remove those metrics. A hundred percent. And this, this spreadsheet will not be shared publicly. This mm -hmm. is, it's more really just to identify, to pull out the items that you have identified really as green. Okay, okay. Then uh, if you want what, what we can do, and, uh, and maybe some, some people can volunteer and help on this, would be to basically transfer the list of the metrics that we have right now in the code review, sorry, in the code development focus area. So those that are green, we can include in the, in the spreadsheet. And I would include those that are in the goal efficiency as well, because we are going to start working with them. Yep, that sounds good. And I think like based on the discussion today, then things like discussion about um, issue, you know, issue resolution, that might be something yeah. like a Exactly. So uh, I, I want to have I want to have a proposal for goal efficiency during the next two weeks. Great. And once I have it, I can transfer it into a spreadsheet, or maybe after the next meeting, when people have the opportunity of comment on the on the proposal. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So I for can now, I, as an action item, I can start kind of doing this, trying to map what you have in the repository. Oh, that this. would be great. That yep. would be great. You can certainly do that for the green metrics. I mean, those that are already in the table in that file. Great. And, and for the others, whatever you may prefer, because my, my impression is that many of the metrics are going to change at least in name. And some others maybe are going to be removed and maybe some others are going to be aided. Totally, totally fine. And like I said, this spreadsheet does not go public. This is not okay. the... Okay, okay, no problem. No, no problem with it being public either. So the, the only problem is that people understand that it's completely subject to movements. Totally, totally agreed. So why don't okay. I, I'll do that. And then for next week's talk, you can kind of cross reference it like, to make sure that I didn't make something that's red, green. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I, I will do. Thank okay. you. Okay, anything else to discuss about this? Somebody else wants to comment or something? So okay. I I went ahead and added the focus areas and metrics to the spreadsheet while we were talking. Oh, thank you. And I just wanted to make sure that I put them correctly in there because I haven't been fully involved in the development of the metrics. So I hope I got it right. Okay, I can go. I can go to it later on, but I, 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 I'm quickly going through it, and I find it reasonable. Okay. So um, I don't know if um, 
if you want to include question uh, and, and goals also as a part of the spreadsheet or does it make sense or I think for this spreadsheet, it's not super necessary. I mean, okay. the assumption would be is that if a metric is green, that it has made it through the goal question metric <laughs> um, journey. Mm -hmm. it it's clearly has a goal associated with it and it's clearly answering a metric. Well, so I was just thinking about now and when uh, a goal is close to be complete or we still have many metrics which are, I don't know, red or need, for instance. It would mean that maybe some metrics are defined, but still there is a lot of staff to work in that goal. Like, like the metric is defined, but it's not necessarily part of a goal or a question? No, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like uh, uh, you define a goal with, say, three questions and maybe 15 metrics, yep. but you only have two metrics screen. Oh, that that's goal. fine. Which so means that, uh, yeah. No, no, but what, I, what I'm saying is that by looking at the spreadsheet right now, it's difficult to know whether you have a lot of goals close to complete or you have some cherry picking from here and there and you really don't have any, clo any goals close to complete. How about this? Let me try the mapping over the course of the week and then we can talk about it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. That, that's, that's, that's sensible. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you and thank you, Georg, for producing the first version of it. Any comment or any other comment over this? No, I'm good. Okay. Any other item? Because I think that we don't have anything else in the agenda. No, this any is good problem? for me. Okay, anyone wants to say anything else? <laughs> okay, then I think we are done then. So All thank right. you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.